Hello, everybody. It's me, Evan Grant, your friend of the Rangers Insider for DallasNews.com and Dallas Morning News. Whether you want to take the paper online or take it in print, options abound. How's everybody doing? Don't answer it. It's a rhetorical question because you cannot answer it. Anyway, it's May. The Rangers are in first place in the American League West. Let's just get right to it. We've got a lot to talk about here. I've got a full page of notes. A lot of stuff to go over. Let's start with Jacob deGrom. Bring the room down for a minute. Um, listen, this is the way it's going to be with Jacob deGrom. Uh, there's going to be a lot of scares. There's going to be a lot of times when he walks off the mound. Um but when he's on the mound, he's going to be really, really good. I still can't tell you how much he's going to be on the mound, but he's going to be on the mound. He's going to be good. Walked off the mound on Thursday against the Yankees, uh, or Friday, with what was described as some forearm tightness. Later, described, later uh, diagnosed as elbow inflammation, Apparently nothing structural with the ligament there, which is the big sigh of relief. All I can tell you is this, that in all of Jacob deGrom's trials and tribulations over the past six years, he's had two elbow two elbow issues, both of which um, he left the field with a really a distressed look on his face and uh, came back within 10, 15 days on both of them. Uh, at one point in time, there was a 10-day DL. Now, for pitchers, it's a it's 15-day injured list. Um, and so I, I think the takeaway here is we don't know how long he's going to be out. We don't get to what the Rangers will do in a second. But I think the takeaway on all this is, as I've tried to say, this is a Ferrari. This is a high-performance engine. This is a guy, if I've learned anything about Jacob deGrom in the two months I've been around him so far, it is – that this is a guy who knows his delivery, knows his mechanics. This is why he makes it look so effortless when he's on the mound. But it's also a guy who, when he when something is not 100% right, he's very well attuned to that. And if he can't get it right right away, he's not going to push it to the point where the engine's going to break long term. 2018, he took a swing with the Mets. Um Felt something in the swing, went back out to the mound, pitched. At the end of the uh, inning, it was against Atlanta. He left with uh, what he was what was described then as a hyperextended elbow. I think there would be some inflammation in the elbow in that in that situation too. A year later, came back had uh, had right elbow soreness um, that was never more specifically diagnosed. Came back again within ten days both situations it worked out okay he won the Cy Young award so uh this is a guy who will scare fans who want to be scared um but I also think that this is part of the price of doing business here with a guy who's so good at what he does that he's not going to risk uh doing more long-term harm to himself by trying to pitch through something uh, than is necessary. And listen, I don't blame the guy after two years in New York where he had a significant number of significant injuries. Uh, the best thing pitchers can do is know themselves and be honest because I think you get into more problems when you try and pitch through something and exacerbate injuries rather than if you say, okay, I've got something that's barky here today. Let's take a time out. Let's rest it a little bit. Let's keep let, let's keep it going. Um, do I know that Jacob will only be out two weeks in in, in this situation? No, I don't. Um, but I, I I do think that the twenty four hour later diagnosis was a whole lot more optimistic than what I would have thought on Friday night. And so we shall see. I do know that when we talked to him. In Kansas City, when he came out of a game there after he was had a no-hitter for four innings, um, you know, I, I asked him a question about 
mechanics versus physical pain. And the context of the question was basically, were you more concerned that your mechanics would get so out of whack that you would cause significant damage than you were about the actual pain? And he very quickly gravitated and definitively said, yes, 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 yes. And so his his concern was, at that point in time, he had some wrist pain. Uh, I should say that this injury is not in any way, doesn't appear to be connected to that wrist injury. But he had a little bit of wrist soreness. It's in his mind. He's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. You start to overcompensate. You start to overpronate. You start to do some things where you short on your delivery. All of a sudden, now you're doing things to the muscles and the ligaments that you haven't trained them to do. That is when you get catastrophic injuries. So, the Rangers will go forward. The great news here, well, there's no great news with an injury, but the good news or the the, the uh I don't know why I can't come up with words anymore, but the in the interim, the Rangers have two off days this week. It allows them to basically, if they want to, go with a four-man rotation for the next two, really up until they get to Seattle on May, May 9th, I think it is, or May 10th, where they could basically go with a four-man rotation, still have everybody on regular four days rest, still have Dane Dunning in the bullpen in a role that is necessary. Then, and essentially they'd, they'd be going with nine relievers, which you can't do anymore unless you're using a four-man rotation. And then have Dunning start, against Seattle, and potentially, if they get good news on DeGrom, potentially that's the only time you need to start Dane, and then you move him back into the, into the bullpen. That's nothing against Dane Dunning. I, I think that even if it was a month situation here, um, I think Dane is, is is proven that he's in a much better spot than he was last year, um, or really even in 2021 or 2021. Um, but he's been a real asset in the bullpen. I don't want to take that out, especially with the bullpen having some questions. I'm going to learn a lot more about the bullpen here, I think, in May. Um, So it gives the Rangers the opportunity to try and navigate through this this little situation, potentially um, by being able to not really – well, you lose Jacob deGrom, but not – not having to subtract from the bullpen uh, and and make temporary adjustments to the rotation, really what you can do is just you can reinforce the bullpen a little bit, which they did with the addition of Jerry Rodriguez, of Jerry Rodriguez. So we shall see if that's the way they go um, this first time out. I think a lot will depend on just how optimistic things seem with Jacob once they get through the second off day this week against uh, after they, they played two games against Colorado. At that point in time, I think they'll make a decision on how they want to approach the, the rotation for the next week or 10 days. If now let's get to the, let's get to the hypotheticals. Let's say that DeGrom is out for, for a significant amount of time. If that's the case and given where the Ranger bullpen is, and how much of an asset Dunning has been there. Listen, I, the range. I, I I wrote this over the weekend, and I don't think the that it should come as a big surprise. I don't think the Rangers should should say, okay, we we did what we could this this season to beef up the rotation. It's done. Um, I think you got to keep adding, and and I think they understand that. I I think they know that that the intent was that by adding Jake Odorizzi and getting that contract for, for essentially nothing that they were giving themselves a layer of insurance. Uh, and they hoped that Cole Wynn would take another step forward uh, at the minor league level. Well, Odorizzi is already out for the year. Cole Wynn has not really pitched all that well at AAA. Zach Kent, who I really like as a, as a big league pitcher is out with a, I believe it's an oblique injury there. So that whole layer um, of depth has been eroded 
Now, if you go into the bullpen where Dunning and Cole Reagans have both been pretty effective, now you're taking from an area that's already a little bit weak. So, listen, there's a couple teams out there that are off to absolutely dreadful starts, and that's not to demean anything that, that of those teams because the Rangers have been there and done that in the last few years. Uh, but old friend Lance Lynn and the Chicago White Sox, not off to a good start. Lance had a great start the other night against Tampa Bay, had six no-hit innings, and then the White Sox, I believe, gave up 11 or 12 unanswered runs. That's how things are going for them. Uh, White Sox also have a reliever in Kendall Graveman uh, who might make some sense for a team that was looking for some bullpen help. Would you be paying a premium if you tried to go out and get a package deal right now? Yes. Um, but hey, maybe it makes sense to be proactive if you're the Rangers. Maybe it makes sense to step out, get somebody now before you run into an issue. And I've floated this out there. You know, if you get DeGrom back quicker than you expected, maybe all of a sudden Lance Lynn moves to the bullpen as a closer and you say, go get him for two innings, big guy, or an inning, big guy. Um, this is the guy who's hungry to win one more time. He's had a World Series championship in his career. He knows what it's like. He wants to get back there. Um, ultimate competitor. I think he's a guy who would really fit well with Mike Maddox. Um, although they are both strong willed, so that would be interesting. Um, but I think that's I, I think that's worth exploring. So so too do I think is is maybe talking to the Royals about uh Brad Keller. Again, another and, and and all these guys, Lynn and Keller are both uh I think there's an option for Lynn for next year. Uh, for Keller, he's free after the year. And so these teams that are off the bad starts, you might be able to get them to take, you might, you could do, maybe do one of two things in, in a case like Lynn, maybe the White Sox would just like to get rid of that salary. So if you were willing to take on more salary and it's just money right now to Ray Davis, um, maybe you, you don't pay such a high price. Uh, Maybe you, more of the prices we're willing to take on lots and lots of the salary. Keller's Keller's an affordable contract, so I think you'd have to pay uh, much more equity there. Um, so I, I think those are two things that that the Rangers need to at least run the traps through uh, internally and figure out if it would make some sense to try and and pursue uh, to reinforce things. Because listen, if there's one thing that has Showing up in the American League in April, it is that the AL West is contendable. Seattle is going to be without Robbie Ray all season. Uh, Julio Rodriguez was out with a back injury over the over the weekend. Uh, Houston's without Jose Altuve. Uh, Jose Urquidy left Sunday night's start on ESPN with a shoulder injury. Uh, there is a path for the Rangers who have already grabbed a lead in the AOS. There is a path to seize control and make themselves the, the stalking horse that everybody is going to have to chase this year. And that's valuable. Really, really valuable. So I think there's a lot for the Rangers to consider. Um, but let's talk about some other stuff. I know it's not just the Jacob deGrom report. Let's talk about Martin Perez for a minute, right? Uh, probably didn't even have the best start of the weekend for a Ranger against the Yankees. That went to Nathan Uvalde, who gave them such a timely complete game shutout. Since DeGrom had left early the night before, so you save the bullpen, number one. Number two, I think there's an underlying message there with the kind of stuff that Uvalde has that, hey, if somebody needs to step up and be an ace for a while, I've got the ability to do it, and I will put you on my shoulders. Uh, and so I, I, I think that was really important. But I just want to go back to Martin Perez for a minute because, listen, I think everybody here is very familiar with Martin. Um, we've seen him grow from a 21-year-old who, who made his debut, who was a top prospect in the organization, to a very savvy uh, early 30s left-handed pitcher. And let's just say that 2022 was not a fluke. You know, since the start of last year, 
this is a guy who's who's really come to know himself as a pitcher, know his strengths, know his weaknesses, uh, and he's he's exploited that. Uh, he's eighth in the big leagues in innings pitched since the start of 2022. Anthony R.A. at 2.82, and these are the things to me that, that, that really stand out. He's he's sixth in ground ball percentage, so he's getting ground balls, which lead to the fact that, yes, there are some hits that get through, but it also gives him the ability to get out of jams with double play balls. You know, the guys who are ahead of him in ground ball percentage since the start of 22, Amber Valdez, Logan Webb, uh, uh, Kyle Wright, Sandy Alcantara, who has a Cy Young Award from last year to show for it, and Max Fried. Um, it's a good group to be with. It's a really good group to be with. And the guy right behind Perez is Shane Bieber. Also, pretty good pitcher. So, um, that's significant. Uh, the other thing is he, uh, he's got the fourth, I'm sorry. I need to read my notes for one second. I thought I had memorized all those people. He's got the fourth lowest homers per nine rate since the start of last year. Ground balls, not a lot of fly balls in this ballpark right now. When the roof is open and the ball flies, it'd be a bad thing to give up fly balls. Martin has has not beat himself with the home run and not create more issues for himself. Just been outstanding. 36 consecutive starts of at least five innings. He's a number three starter in this rotation. You know, you go five innings every time, and, and listen, the majority of those have been six or more, but you go five innings every time, you're going to give yourself, you're going to give your team a chance to win. And that is what the Rangers have taken advantage of. Uh, the three longer streaks by Rangers all belong to Darvish, Lance Lynn, and Nolan Ryan. If uh, if he goes five in his next start, he'll he'll tie Ryan for with 37 consecutive starts. So, um, Martin Perez was a bargain last year, uh, and he's been a stalwart to start this year. A uh, really good signing by the Rangers. Um, but more important than all that, Martin has just been such a – he's grown so much and he's just really matured into, into the pitcher that I think the Rangers always believed he would be. All right, enough pitching. This is the Rangers. Why are we talking about pitching? Let's talk about – Shortstop fill-ins, Ezekiel Duran and Josh Smith. It has been a knockout in that battle. You know, since Corey Seager went out, Duran's slash line is 333, 373, 521, 893 OPS. Smith, 121, and these numbers are scary. 121, 293, which is all built basically on being hit by pitches, a 212 slugging percentage, and a 505 OPS. He's been a little bit unlucky. His BABIP in that in that period is 167. But part of that is that Josh is hitting the ball in the air a lot. And so those are balls in play that really have no chance for hits. They're just routine fly balls. This is the international symbol for routine fly balls. Look, if Trevor Bauer can do that stupid sword thing in Japan, I can do this for fly balls. Um, he's, he's not hitting the ball hard, and he's not hitting the ball for line drives. And so what we have seen is that the playing time, while it's been equal at shortstop in the 17 games since, uh, since Seager went out, and Seeker should be back middle of May sometime, maybe. He started taking ground balls uh, and, and doing some work in Cincinnati um, when the club was there last week. But Smith has started nine games at shortstop, Duran eight. Duran also started one at, at uh, third base when Josh Young was out with a uh, hand injury. But Duran started the last three games against the Yankees. He started seven of the last eight games in the lineup somewhere. Duran is going to get more and more playing time, and he's just – Flat earned it. This is what you want when a guy goes out and you have bench guys competing for playing time. 
you want somebody to seize the opportunity. Duran has done that. And when Corey Seager comes back, I think Duran is going to end up in a platoon in left field with Travis Jankowski for the foreseeable future. Another guy who is overachieved to this point, and another guy who you don't want to overexpose by facing having him face lefties if you can avoid it. And so you may have a situation, especially since I think Mitch Garver is going to be out um, at least another month, where you can play Robbie Grossman at DH. Duran and uh, Jankowski in left field and get Seeger back at shortstop. And I think you've got you've got a lineup that's that's long. And you know why one of the reasons that lineup is long? Because of Jonah Heim, who's hit fifth and sixth. Heim in April was the best catcher in baseball. Uh, 978 OPS behind the plate, 1.5 war. Just tied for fifth in baseball and war. Not a catcher. Fifth in baseball at war, tied with Wander Franco and Mike Trout. Again, when you tie with Mike Trout for something, it's a good thing. Very good thing. Unless it's football fandom, because Trout's an Eagle fan. And I'm going to tell you, Cowboy fans, the fact that the Eagles have a lot of Georgia Bulldogs, kind of hard for me to not like that team. But hey, We'll keep that on the down low. All right. Uh, so one other thing, and before we get out of here, let's just let's just give a nod to Josh Young. You know, he did have the hand injury uh, this week when he got hit by a pitch. Um, he's had some ups and downs with some strikeouts, probably more strikeouts than he would like. But he's also, in my mind, been as good as any rookie in the American League. He led the American League rookies in home runs and RBI. Set a Ranger record for. Uh, April home runs and RBIs by a rookie uh, with six homers, including the grand slam on Sunday, 21 RBIs. Uh, Sunday's game story from Sean McFarland pointed out the grand slam and a bases loaded walk, a guy who can seize the opportunity and a guy who knows when not to try and do too much. Just a really good effort by Josh Young. Uh, I think he has established himself as a co-favorite, an early co-favorite for American League Rookie of the Year. Um, I think he's going to end up being the American League Rookie of the Month. Um, Yoshida in Boston, I think, also has a, a chance. But Josh has just really done a, a good job. And it's been a long time since you could say that about a Rangers rookie coming in and, and just first full-time month on the job, really seizing the opportunity. So it's been great for him. All right. So that's all of April. It took us 30 days to wrap up. It seems like it took 30 days to wrap up April. May is going to be a test. Got a West Coast swing coming up to Los Angeles uh, and Seattle before they, they get something of a break at Oakland uh, where maybe they'll see the possum in the broadcast booth. I won't be there. I've got a uh, graduation that weekend. So congratulations to Nick. Um, but Sean will be there, and uh, I I will give him instructions on feeding the possum. Come home to face the, face the Braves. It's another test. But let me just say this. Let me point out one other April stat for you. The Rangers played three of the four teams that appeared in the League Championship Series or the World Series last year in, in April. They played the Phillies, the Astros, and the Yankees. One those of those 10 games, they went 8-2, and two, outscored their opponents by 40 runs. They put up 16 on the Phillies, 15 on the Yankees, and a 9 spot on the on the, on, Oak, on Houston. So, uh, an impressive stretch there. Um, and then at the end of the month, they've got another 10-game road trip to surprising Pittsburgh and surprising Baltimore uh, before they finish it off at Detroit. So, this will be a, a, a test of a month. There's only 8 home games in the month, they'll be on the road a lot, um, but they have gotten off to a good start, built some momentum, uh, have so far withstood the injury of their best player. See what happens with uh, with Jacob Degrom. Uh, look, May is interesting. 
When was the last time you could say that about the Texas Rangers? And I think it's going to be interesting into into the summer. Uh, and I think you're looking at meaningful baseball in September. How's that sound? Sound good? All right. Best thing I ate in the last couple of weeks. God, what is with my hands? You know, my daughter used to say I did like interpretive hand dancing in the car when she was just precocious. Whatever. All right. The best thing I ate, uh, did I, I, I don't think I've shown you my barbecue in Kansas City and uh, was pretty good. You know, Kansas City, the barbecue to get there, obviously, is burn ends, the brisket burn ends. Um, they do it really well. I'm not a big fan of just straight brisket there. That's a Texas thing. Sliced or chopped brisket, Texas brisket burn ends, Kansas City. Ribs in Kansas City are good. Those are my two go-tos there. So went to my two favorite places up there right now, Q39. You're seeing the uh, the brisket burn ends appetizer that I had. I would like you to know, had a salad for lunch. Had the burn ends for the appetizer with that, yes, giant pile of onion rings that's in the background. But then I had a salad. The salad may have had a couple of bacon-wrapped shrimp on top, but it was a salad. And so far as my wife knows, I had a salad for lunch that day. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Q39, I think, does a great job on the burn ends. Um, if you're going to go to KC and have burn ends, uh, that would be my first pick. There's a couple other places I haven't been to. I'm not going to reveal. Well, I'll reveal them. A friend of mine, another uh, ball writer who... Uh, Actually spent some time in Kansas, went to school at KU. Uh, Dave O'Brien of The Athletic in Atlanta. A big fan of Slaps. I have not been to Slaps, so it's been a little bit out of the way for me to get to. But Slaps Barbecue is, is a favorite spot of his. And the other place that I went to was the Char Bar. And I always love places that have rhyming names. As you may recall, you know, in 2000, my claim to fame was that on the back of this Mark Clark baseball card. Who remembers the Mark Clark era in Texas? This is a Topps Mark Clark card, which is probably worth about three cents. It says, according to writer Evan Grant of the Dallas Morning News, Mark is one of seven pitchers in history whose first and last name run. The others, Turk Burke, Ed Head, Still Bill Hill, Bill McGill, Tiny Miney, and the immortal Cy Pie. It's right there. Probably can't read it because it's backwards, but whatever. Anyway, so uh, I love I love restaurants that rhyme. And at Char Bar, I had this cool appetizer, uh, charred bits and grits. Again, rhymes was uh, some burn ends, some pickled jalapeno cheddar grits, jalapeno cheddar grits. Um, what else was in there? Oh, a little candied bacon. Really good. Really good little appetizer. Um, just a plate of barbecue trash. And that's me, Mr. Barbecue Trash. All right, and then the entree was some smoked wings and ribs, three of each there. Um, again, really good, really good. Uh, the wings were nice and smoke fried, kind of. So you got a little bit of smoke. You got a little bit of crisp. Um I did. They weren't drenched in sauce. You could do whatever you wanted for sauce there, um, which was nice. Um, ribs, you know, I, I on spare ribs, I don't want to necessarily fall off the bone. I want them to just come off the bone with a bite. So your baby backs, it's fine if they're all slap, slappy, sloppy. If they just fall right off the bone when you pick them up on the on the spare ribs, I. I want, and I know this is too labor intensive for some people, and I know that I've met a number of people here, weird as the, as this may be. And listen, I don't want to be, I don't want to be judgy, but I will be on people um, and food habits. But people who won't eat food on the bone or won't eat food in um, their 
skeletal remains, like people who won't eat peel and eat shrimp or crabs. I don't get it. But so I know that there are a number of people who don't want to eat wings off the bone. They want boneless wings. Those are nuggets! Nuggets! They won't eat, they won't eat ribs. All right, but these ribs, they came right off the bone with a nice bite, good bark. Um, I still listen. I like spare ribs, but I, I think if I was choosing my rib favorites, it would be the um beef, the brontosaurus beef rib, the baby back. I, I like a good, nice charred baby back, and then the spare rib. Um, so both these places are great. If you go to Kansas City, uh, which by the way, I highly recommend going to that park. It's still, I think, a timeless park. Um, really well done. Uh, yes, there's not much around the park there, but go to Country Club Plaza. Go to, uh, there's other places around Kansas City. Go visit the Negro Leagues Museum. Uh, it's a good baseball trip, good food. There's a number more barbecue places. Uh, Joe's Kansas City, Jack Stack, Arthur Bryant's, Gates. Uh, as I mentioned, Q39, Char Bar, um, guy named Meet Mitch, who was an investor in Char Bar, who was also the uncle of former Ranger pitcher Wes Benjamin, uh, has some spots there. So uh, get yourself to KC and get some barbecue and some baseball. Okay. In the meantime, I'm going to get off. I've got a wedding. Uh, and I'll tell you about this later, but I have cousins who are clowns who did actually juggle at my wedding. Uh, and their son, who's a, who followed in their parents' large shoes footsteps and became a clown too, he performs at fairs. He's not really a clown. He calls it Danny Grant's Cowboy Circus. If you're ever at a fair and Danny is there, another rhyme. Go see him. Much like me, he doesn't have any hair. Um, but he's great. And so Danny's getting married this weekend in Pensacola. Beachfront wedding uh, in Cinco de Mayo with clowns. Does that seem like my place? So I will, uh, I will report back from the clown wedding. Uh, and... Uh, Get with you sometime, probably during the Rangers series in Seattle. Um, this has been great. I'm sorry it's so long, but I love you all. And I just want to spend as much time as I can with you. And how great is it to actually be able to talk about the Rangers and it be interesting for a change? Though not as interesting as Clown Cousins, I got to admit. All right. I will. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Have fun. Jazz hands out. See everybody. Good video.